everyone! In today's video, I'll be showing you how I drew this Alsatian portrait using colored pencils. So I start off with an initial sketch and I make sure that the initial sketch is as accurate as possible according to the reference photo. So the proportions have to be accurate. Uh, that's very uh, crucial if you're doing a realistic drawing and you want your drawing to look realistic, you need to have an accurate sketch for the proportions all correct. Um, no matter how well you lay down the color pencils, if your initial sketch is not correct and the proportions are not right, it's going to show in your final piece. Like for example, if the eye is not placed in the correct area or if the nose is too low or the nose is too short, it's going to show in your final piece no matter how well you lay down the pencil. So um, what you've seen me do there is I lay down all the color pencil down and I retain the highlights. And after that, I just use the odorless mineral spirits, um, artist white odorless mineral spirits, just to blend out the color pencil so that you don't see a lot of the white of the paper, or you don't see the white of the paper showing through the color pencil. So I use that a lot in my drawings, just to make sure that the pencil is blended well and that you don't see the paper through. Now I am using the uh, Primart hot press watercolor paper. Uh, this is a size A4. Um, this paper is very smooth paper, but it's also very thick and it can take multiple layers of pencil as well as me using the mineral spirits with not having any issues with the paper or the pencils. So uh, back to your initial sketch, you need to make sure that your initial sketch is as accurate as possible. So whether you're doing it freehand or whether you're using the grid method, try to pay close attention to your reference photo and get that initial sketch 100% accurate. Um, if you don't want to damage your main paper or your main page uh, with the main drawing on it, then you can do the initial sketch on regular printer paper and then just use transfer paper to transfer the image onto your main paper and then you can start working with your color pencils. So as you can see, I'm working section by section. Remember, once you use the mineral spirits on a certain area, you need to let that area dry before moving on to an, uh, before going over it with another layer. So that's why you'll see I keep moving to another area as I'm working just so that I can give that area a chance to dry. Now, um, the paper you see under my hand, that is uh, tracing paper. Um, I just keep a sheet of that under my hand as I work, just so that I can prevent any oils or if I've got any lotion on my hand, any oils from my skin getting onto the main paper or uh, me even smudging the uh, drawing. So that's a good tip to have that piece of paper under your hand. Um, if you don't have tracing paper, you can use regular, just a sheet of printer paper. But I just prefer the tracing paper so that I can actually still see the drawing through when I'm working on my piece. So now you can see I'm gone on to the nose. Now once again, I'm paying very close attention to my reference photo. I'm looking at the darks and the lights, the shadows and the highlights. Um, it's very important to remember that some of the highlights uh, will have color in it. Like in this reference photo, the highlights were a color or had a, a shininess with blue in it, which I had to obviously bring into the drawing. Um, because obviously it's not completely white, those areas, wherever the highlighted areas are on the nose or where the shiny wetness of the nose is or of the eye as well. You'll see I've put a bit of blue in and I haven't used white there. Um, I did go over with a little bit of white uh, later for the eye, but I've used the initial color as blue, which is just showing the light that's shining on his nose. Um, so yes, as I'm applying the um, white mineral spirits, I'm also um, paying close attention to the area. I'm not letting the color spread uh, too far into areas that don't need that color. For example, the, bl uh, the dark or black of the nose, um, I don't want it to spread into the highlight area too much. So I pay close attention uh, as I'm working with the mineral spirits and I also don't put too much of mineral spirits as I'm blending. Um, I don't want to also soak up the page with too much of spirits and then it'll take longer to dry. And also you don't need a lot. You just need a little on your brush uh, if you have excess you can just dab it onto a paper towel, which is what I do, and then I can blend with just the remainder what's on the brush because I work a small area at a time. Uh, another thing um, that you can do, which I do a lot, um, is when it comes to colors that I'm using, I don't really pay close attention to what exact color I'm using. Usually I have a piece of scrap paper beside me as I'm working. If I'm looking for a particular brown, I'll pick the pencil, I'll look at the browns and I'll pick up the pencil, which I think is closest to the reference photo and what I want to use. I apply it onto the paper and if I see it's not the right color, then I go to another one and pick one and try it out. Sometimes even after doing that, it looks right. When I put it onto the main drawing, I do a very, keep a very light hand and I apply the pencil. I see it's the wrong color. Once again, go back, take another color, try that out and then try it on the main drawing. And it usually turns out to be the correct color or I have to go back and look for another one. 
but I don't really pay close attention to the exact colors. I just basically uh, see what the color I need on the reference photo is and then I look for a color similar to that in my pencil set that I'm using. So another thing with color pencils that you must remember, if you are working with them, keep a very light hand when you're applying them to the paper. Don't press down too hard. By pressing down too hard, you will not be able to put uh, multiple layers on the paper because you will damage the tooth of the paper. Once you damage the tooth of the paper, it's very hard to get those additional layers. So try to keep a light hand and apply um, very little pressure when you are um, applying the pencil. If you are burnishing an area to blend, retain that or keep that for the last step so that you know you're not going to need to add multiple layers over that and that will be your final layer that if you are burnishing or uh, using the burnishing method to blend your pencil. But um, as I said, if you're using the Artist White Odorless Mineral Spirits, which you can get at your local art store, that you can just um, use that for blending. That helps a lot also to cover the white of the paper and also to smoothen uh, or blend the pencils into one another. So you can add multiple layers of pencil and then you can just blend it out with that. So that's definitely something I use in almost all my drawings. Um, the only thing I don't use it for is if I'm drawing with color pencil on toned paper. Then I don't use the uh, Odorless Mineral Spirits. Uh, I haven't actually tried it. I'm, I have to actually try it and see what happens or if it does blend. But usually that paper, the tone paper, is not the same paper of, as this hot press watercolor paper. So it's gonna, um, it may um, work or it may not work. I'm not sure. But I prefer to only use it on the thicker paper that is the hot press watercolor paper when I'm using the spirits. So just a little side note for those of you who have been following the progress on my Animal Habitats art series. I'm currently working on the fourth piece in the series that is the highland or mountain animals. I've just put that aside when I saw this reference photo of the Alsatian and I wanted to do the portrait using color pencils and I also thought it will be a variety to my channel. Uh, for those of you who want to see more tutorials and demonstrations and maybe learn some hints and tips using different mediums. So I said it will be um, a good thing to put a bit of writing there and have some of these videos in between the Animal Habitat uh, art series videos. So in the coming weeks you will be seeing uh, some of the Animal Habitat art series as it progresses to the final one. And you will be also seeing some of the uh, some other mediums or other drawings or tutorials or demonstrations that I'll be doing with other mediums. That's just to create a bit of variety for, um, uh, for any viewers that want to see those video types of videos instead of uh, the animal habitat series or in addition to. So if you want to see what I'm working on or what I'm busy with uh, at the moment, uh, you can check my Instagram page out. The link will be in the description below. Then you can just keep up to date with what I'm working on and how far in the animal habitat art series I've come as well. So I guess that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you found this video helpful and if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like and share. Feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Till the next one. Bye.